Hi everyone. Okay, video number two, two, two. Let's hop right into it. I was gonna put these together, but obviously I cannot. So let's just go right into the next one. Okay, so this message, message, this <laughs> reply is for Dirty Eye Vids. Hi, Els. And so yes, he wrote in before. I think last month. But it's all good in the hood because, as I said, this is no longer viewer Q&A month. If you have a question, whether you write in every day, whether you brand new listener or viewer. Sorry, I always get radio and YouTube crisscross. And when I'm on the radio, I say things that clearly are meant for YouTube. My brain is like, what? Sorry. So, not listening, but watching. If this is your first time watching, you also can leave your question or comment in the comment box below or you can Facebook me or you can about me or you can tweet me or you can inbox me yeah I'm forgetting something anyway you get the point you can contact me okay so dirty have this his question which is actually a very very great question his question is Westboro Baptist Church Westboro Baptist Church um how do I feel about the church how do I feel about kids protesting with them and do I feel like it makes Christians look crazy? <sighs> I can make a whole series of videos about this topic, okay? But I'm going to try and do it. You guys know I'm trying to stick to 20-minute videos. And eventually, I'll do well enough to where I can do 10-minute videos. And right now, I'm still at 20. I'm trying to master 20-minute 20, 20 videos. Okay. <clears throat> First of all, <laughs> I am aware of Westboro Baptist Church. I have heard of them. I have seen some of their protesting. I have... I didn't see the docu- what's the- I don't know if it was a documentary or was it just like a 2020 like let's look into the lives of these people. Um, man, I do believe that they make the church look crazy. Absolutely. But I cannot say that it is all on them because honestly, if the church was doing what it's supposed to be doing, then they would be like a flicker in the bucket. And people would be like, what? You're not a Christian. You need to take that. Non-believers would be like, you need to take that name down. You're not Christianly at all. Like, what is that? What are you doing? But the reason why people still consider them a church and crazy church people is because true church followers, true believers in Christ are not about a thizzle. They are not about their father's business. Because if they really, really and truly were, our lives would be different the world would be a different place. So many things would be different. And people and there would be a clear distinction between people who follow Christ and people who don't. And it would be clear, like, oh, these people, no, you're not really a Christian. You know, I mean, like, it would be obvious. And I think some people do that to an extent, but I just feel like all around the body of Christ could be doing so much more than what we're doing. And I think, unfortunately, we get distracted with other things. But that's another video. So I'm staying focused here. Staying streamlined. In, or streamlined for Westboro. Okay, so, yes, I do think they're absolutely, literally, literally a crazy lot of loons. And um, with all things and with all religions, I do feel like people start out with good intentions and then somewhere along the line, they take a left turn, and then it just goes downhill from there. And that's actually one of my prayers. I'm always like, God, I don't ever want to be a public success but a private failure. I don't want to ever, 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 like, in the pursuit of my life and doing things for you, I forget to check in with you and then take a wrong turn somewhere and then end up putting out negativity in your name. Because that's really what happens. Like, people fight wars in God's name. People have holy wars in God's name. People commit genocide in God's name. There's all these things that people do and they attack God's name on it. And God's like, I didn't even say that. Like, what? I don't even know you. Like, what are you saying? So, 
yeah 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 for sure they're crazy and it's unfortunate and they do make the christian faith look crazy because as i said they're slapping god's name on it calling it the gospel and it's not like you will the main thing that you can the main way rather that you can tell if someone is a true christ follower if they really have a relationship with christ you can tell by their lifestyle because their lifestyle will line up with the life of christ not the life of paul not the life of abraham not the life of anybody else but if they're a christ follower it will follow up with the life of christ why because christ lives in them and they will replicate his life because he lives in them right so never once did i read in the bible the same one that they use i never read where god protested at anyone's funeral I never read where God or Jesus rather was calling people derogatory names and then slapping God's name on top of it I never I never ever ever the stuff that they do I've never seen anywhere, anywhere in scripture where Jesus did those things so I would let you know it's only two people you could be emulating if you're not emulating Jesus then it else is only 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 one other entity that you could be emulating. I'm just saying, I'm not calling you a demon, but I'm just saying you surely aren't a saint. And that is not angelic at all, the activity that, that they do. So <clears throat> uh old people used to say you can judge a uh, you can judge a tree by its fruit, right? <clears throat> and that fruit is just not it's not love, it's not peace, it's not drawing it's not endearing it's not sweet and those are the things that i experience on a regular basis when i come in contact with people who love god so that's my two cents spiritually speaking about them um also as far as their children okay so here's the thing the principles in the bible work for anyone you don't have to be saved to get the principles in the Bible to work because they're principles. Principles work if you apply them, right? Like, I don't have to be a quantum physics genius to take a quantum physics equation, plug in the correct entities and the correct variables to get the right answer. That doesn't make me a genius. That means I understood the principle and I applied it, right? Excuse me. So, the Bible says that you should... <laughs> Train up a child in the way they go and they will not depart from it. That doesn't only mean Christians. That means whatever you do with your children at home, they're going to repeat that. They are doomed to repeat that, good or bad, the rest of their lives. Until their adulthood and they can, if it's something bad, they'll probably have to go through a process to weed that out and to remove that from the life path that you've set them on. If it's something good, then, you know, they'll run full speed ahead and it'll be awesome and it'll produce good things. So... That's, again, a principle in the Bible. Unfortunately, them bringing their children into this foolery and then teaching their children about this foolery and then allowing their kids to feel like this foolery is for real and this foolery makes sense and this foolery is pleasing to God is foolery. Like, sir, have several seats. You and your, what is it, his nephew and his youngest son, all of y'all have several seats. Have a stadium of seats. Like, sir, sir, really? Your kids? You got your kids on the corner calling people fags and all this other stuff? Really? Really? That That's what a parent does? That's, that's a good look for a parent? Even if you feel that way, why would you impose that on your kids and their they're not able to discern what's good and evil. You know, people say that actually people make those same claims about Christianity in general. Like, oh, you shouldn't carry your kids to church and you should let your kids figure out their own brain and da 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 da, da. Let me tell you something. I have never been asked to do anything in church or by my parents or by church leadership that was harm to my life or anyone else's. I've always only ever been asked to do positive and good things. So... I don't see why people would say that's a negative thing to allow your kids to grow up in church and in Sunday school and in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Like, I mean, my life has improved because of it. You know, I stayed out of harmful situations. There are places I didn't go. Later I found out the place got shot up. Woo! Because these are the things that were instilled in me. So, I'm tangent. I'm going off on a tangent right now. But what I'm saying is, I think it's really, really unfortunate that these kids are in this situation. And honestly, there is a loophole... 
in um, social services where although people have freedom of religion and they can even join a cult if they want to, if kids are in danger and if their mental stability is challenged, DCS has every right to go in and get those kids. I'm telling you, if I was in that area and I, my social work badge, oh, I'd yoke all of them up. Mm -mm. Because it's unfortunate. And here's the thing. You're still putting your kids in harm way, harm's way because after... They're out on the corner, we hate gays and blah, 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 and the Lord does too. And after they are on the corner doing this crazy, crazy stuff, and someone decides to blow up where they live or blow up their church, and the kids are inside, now you'll be the first one, oh, sue them, take them to court. I want a full-on manhunt for these people who did this to my kids. You did it to your kids. Manhunt yourself, hang yourself, sat down, sir. Like, really, you're setting your kids up. Like, you so are setting your kids up. And I used to know people like that. Oh, my God. I know people. I just had a conversation with someone, and he was so just hard and rigid and judgmental. He's a Christian, but he was just, I mean, oh, this person is this, and this person is that, and this. I was like, sir, first of all, God is the God of the gray area. So for people who haven't figured out if they love God or not, people who are still trying to figure out this whole God thing, God is right there with them. And how dare you tell them that they're on their way to hell because their life isn't sufficient for you. Because what things in your life are falling short? And that's the thing with the Westboro Church. No one's perfect. So while they're out protesting and being hateful, let's look at your life. Let's put your life under a microscope. And if your life is squeaky clean, then yo, let's get the boulders. Let's... I'll help you chuck the boulders at people, which is essentially what Christ said. Like, he who has the first, who has no skin, sin, let him cast the first stone. That includes Westboro Church. Uh, I'm sure your sins are long. <laughs> that list is long. Amen. So, I, what I need you to do is go somewhere and just sit down. Like, that's my opinion. <laughs> you should just sit down. And they do make Christians look crazy. But then again, there are other churches that also make Christians look crazy because they say hateful things. They, they're not just with homosexuality, just in general. Like, people can be very judgy, very, ew, just stank. Like, ugh. And it does give God a bad name. It totally gives God a bad name. So, mmm. So that's my two cents about Westboro Church and the kids and, and, and their protests. And I just, man, and they do all that to like when like the thing is when people are like, I'm doing this for God. And, okay, pause for the cause. Mm, God doesn't need you to do that. God is God. Like if God wanted to blow someone up, he could do it. If God wanted to hurt someone or embarrass them or whatever, like. God would do it, but because he's not doing those things, he didn't want them done. Like, I don't understand. I, I don't understand people's logic when they're like, you know, I, I'm doing this to defend God. And he's God. He doesn't need your... What are you going to do to help God? What are your little... I mean, your little negative commentary and, you know, insulting signs. And blah, 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 blah. Really? God needs you to do that? Really? What I'm thinking God needs you to do is put all that time, energy, and effort and money into making those signs and into practicing your chants and all of that. How about you raise some money and help starving children somewhere? How about you put that together, help the homeless people on your block? How about you take that time and figure out, hmm, how can we be more effective to improve this community that we live in? Not protest funerals of soldiers, but to really actually do something practical. I mean, really and truly, if you really want to do something for God, go hard for God, how about you go hard for that? Like, I don't know, guys. I just, <laughs> I have very little patience, and I really need to work on that. I have very little patience for people who say just off the wall to the left stuff, and then they're like, and I'm saying it for God. What? <laughs> what? Don't be talking on, on behalf of my dad, spreading rumors. Ugh. Putting words in my daddy mouth. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Speaking of things I don't like.